Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to compress and reduce the size of any video file without losing quality. And I wanna show you two solutions. The professional solution, as a professional editor, I've been using this solution for about 15 years. And I wanna show you another open source software that anybody could use if you're doing this for uh, really personal reasons. So I wanna show you both so you kinda of get an idea of what each one does. And I want to dive in in more detail, so I'll give you some technical things, but you don't have to have any technical knowledge because I'll explain everything along the way. And at the end of the video, if it's still too large, I'll show you how to send it with a couple of different websites and applications that let you send any size file to anybody. So if you're trying to email this and it's too big for that, and you're trying to compress it for that, and it still doesn't work, I'll explain that at the end. Let's jump in. So here is the video file right here. I have the MP4 file, but the file extension doesn't matter all that much because we could basically do it with any type of a video file. And this is 3.1 gigabytes. So on Mac or window, you should see basically the size here. And there's an option, usually if you right click, you should be able to get information on any video file. So you could see the dimension if you wanna learn about that, or if you wanna see the duration. They're all usually in this, but we really don't need to worry about any of that. So let me show you what software I'm going to use. Let's start with this one. This is the professional solution. It's called Adobe Premiere, and it's used by most editors nowadays. And you could go ahead and do a free trial of this, and I think it's seven days, but there's no watermark or anything. So if you want to just do this this one time, the free trial will allow you to do it. But I use this every day because it's the program I use to edit my videos too and to export them for YouTube and sending it to clients and so on. So I have it opened up. This is a brand new project here and I just need to import my media over here on the left side. So I'll go to my finder here where my video is just sitting on my desktop. This is the video I'm trying to compress. I'm gonna grab it and bring it over here. Okay, then once it's over here, I just need to grab it again and just create a timeline or a sequence. This is basically now my edited video that I have over here. Now, to export this and compress it to make it smaller without losing quality, I'll come up to File up here, and then let's go to Export, and then let's go ahead and press Media right here. And I wanna show you some options you have over here because this is really where everything comes into play. Your format, the best format for the longest time has been H.264. This is just how the compression is going to get applied, so that's okay. Now for preset, let me just explain a few of these. This kinda of takes care of a lot of the thinking for you. So if you know where you're going with your video, you could go ahead and choose some of these presets. So are you going to YouTube or Vimeo or are you going to mobile? You could choose any of these. Now, let me just show you what I choose and then I'll show you how to actually reduce the size even further. I typically choose YouTube 1080p Full HD. Now this video is in 4K, okay? So if you look over here, it's showing the output is 1920 by 1080 right here. But my source is 3840 by 2160. So this is 4K, this is HD. If I wanna keep it as it was, I do need to choose the 4K option right here. It says 4K. Now, then if you look, the output and the input are the same. Now, if you wanna keep them the same, just make sure these two stay the same based on what you choose. But I'm gonna reduce the size to HD because that's what I need for YouTube. This is perfect for websites and everything else too. I don't really need 4K. This will help me a lot with my size. Okay, so H.264, 1080p, but let me show you under the video tab right here. So if I go down here, right here, bitrate setting, go there, and you have some options here. Now by default, this is already making this much, much smaller. You could always look down here. Estimated file size is about 1.1 gigabytes or 1100 or so megabytes, right? So this is already two gigabytes smaller than my 3.1 gigabyte file that I started with. But if we need to reduce further, we could reduce this bit rate number over here. So the lower I'll go with this, the smaller this will get. So you see 700. So if I go all the way to nothing, it's only 37 megabytes. Now this video is going to look terrible because you can't get it to be this low. 
and this is still too big to email. So in the case of this video at the end, I'll show you how to send a video this size. You don't want to compress it that much. So typically 16 is where I want to be. If I need to reduce it further, I could come down to maybe even 10. That shouldn't look too bad for this video, but this is kind of trial and error with the slider. But look at this. This is four or five times smaller than my original video size already. You could also create something called a two pass. One pass just goes through your video one time. Two pass takes longer, but it goes through your video two times and it gives you two different sliders. Okay, so now you could change your target bit rate and your maximum bit rate. But just to keep it simple, just stay on one pass for the most part and just keep it around 16. If this is too big still, keep reducing it and then go ahead and press export. Now, when you export, you could look at your video. If it looks terrible, come back and then just increase this size. This is how you do this with Adobe Premiere Pro. And I have a link in the description again, so you could get the free trial there. So while this is going, let me show you the second option. Let's go to a web browser here. And this other option is more consumer level, but it should work if you are doing this for non-professional reasons. And this has a lot of settings too. So this is called Handbrake, it's open source, it's completely free. And I already opened it up here so I could show you what it looks like. So when you open Handbrake, this is all you have to do. You have to press open source. So click on this option, open source, and choose your video file. So I'm gonna choose that same one that I chose before, the three gigabyte video file. I'll press open on it. And let this basically get loaded on. And as you could see right here, this is the title of the video. It's nine minutes and 41 second video. Now you have some presets over here that make this process really, really simple. So if I go to the general tab, up on the list here where it says very fast, these are going to be the most compressed, meaning smaller video size. And these are gonna be less compressed, but higher video size. And you can see the quality too. You have 1080p, 720p, which nowadays you really don't wanna do 720p, so we'll stick with 1080p. But we could decide, is it fast, very fast, HQ or Super HQ? Again, Super HQ means bigger, very fast means smaller file size. So we'll go ahead and go with very fast. And you do have some options here, so let me show you. If you go to the video tab right here, this has a little bit of the same settings we saw before. So video encoder, again, H.264. There's also H.265, but I still stick with H.264 here. And your frame rate. Now, if you don't know about frame rate, I typically try to match my source. So again, look up here, source. This is my 4K resolution, but my video frame is 23.9. So I wanna choose the same thing here. By default, that was not one of the presets that we saw, so I wanna make sure that matches. And then here, you have constant quality, which you could reduce here or change here, but I recommend you leave this the same. You could also use the average bit rate, which is similar to what we saw before, and select this option. Now, I typically use average bit rate and work with these numbers here. Now, the lower you go with this, the smaller file size, the lower the quality. So let's go with the default option that this is recommending for me. And let's go ahead and export that. So you could just press start when you're happy with what you want. Now, again, if you want to keep the 4K, go to dimensions and change these back to what you see up here. So whatever up here, if you don't have 4K to begin with, this is not going to be something that you need to worry about. 1080 is 1920 by 1080. That's 1080 HD quality. So again, most of the time you don't have to worry about that. You just have to change some of these settings here. Let's go ahead and press start and let's see what we get out of this. And that is going to get saved to my movies folder because I did not define a path. So I'll check my movies folder. But just to show you the other one, this is my original 3.1 gigs and Adobe Premiere got my video to be 800 or so megabytes. So much, much smaller, less than one gigabyte. Let me press play on it here and the quality is really, really sharp. In fact, I looked at them side by side and I cannot tell the difference. It's still a pretty big file, but if you're going to YouTube or Vimeo or sending this to clients with Google Drive or Dropbox, it doesn't matter that this is this size. All those things are going to work just fine. 
But again, I mentioned if you need it to be smaller, use the techniques I showed you previously. And to send this to people, once you compress it enough without losing quality, you could go ahead and use this website, wetransfer.com. It lets you do up, up to two gigabytes, I believe, for completely for free on here. So you could go ahead and use this option here and you could transfer with the pro option if you need more space. Or you could use a free Vimeo account, drag your file here. You could set it to be completely private so only the person that you send the link to can download or view that video and send it this way. So nowadays file size doesn't matter all that much. Email for video is out of the question for the most part because you have a 20 megabyte or sometimes 15 megabyte file size for emailing videos. So I never email videos because it doesn't make sense to compress a video that much to email. It will look terrible when they post it somewhere else. So I usually recommend WeTransfer or Vimeo for putting videos after you use Adobe Premiere or Handbrake to compress those videos to the smallest possible size. And typically in my experience, Handbrake takes much, much longer, but you can compress video files to be pretty much the same size. In Premiere, it's a little bit easier and much faster. That's why I recommend that as a professional option. And I use Handbrake for more consumer level personal options. So that's why I wanted to give you both. And then I use WeTransfer or Vimeo to send that to a client or to a friend or family member whoever is getting that file, both of those will work for you. And both of those options are free too. So everything is linked below in the description and one of those should solve your problem. But remember, you don't have to take a five gigabyte file and try to compress it to be 20 megabytes to email it. Okay, so if the video file is too long or too large and it can get to 20 megabytes, don't email it. Use one of the other solutions that I mentioned. You can also use Dropbox or Google Drive, which are just cloud storage places for free and then put your video file there and share a link and then someone could download the link from there. I hope you found this useful. Please give it a thumbs up. I post easy to follow tech videos every single day and I hope to catch you next time.